What's up, sweet tits? Uh, you got to check out my fall dates all on sale now at SatVolcanoComedy.com. We got uh, Toronto. We have Hamilton, Canada, Ontario there. Richmond, Virginia. Hershey, Pennsylvania, second show added. Knoxville. Uh, Atlanta, second show added. Birmingham, Louisville, Evansville, Jacksonville, Tampa, Orlando, Sacramento, San Jose, Santa Rosa. All on sale right now. SavileCanoComedy.com. Merch is up there, too. Uh, yeah, that's my next dates, and that's going to be it for a little while, so make sure you get out there. Thanks, guys. All right, and then this head. Hey, folks, Joe DeRosa here from the Taste Buds Podcast. I got dates. I got dates. I got dates. Go to JoeDeRosaInfo.com to check them out. You can also buy your tickets there. Get all the show info you need. Uh, first up, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Then I will be heading off to San Diego, California. I am also hitting Somerville in Massachusetts. After that, North Carolina and some other stuff JoeDeRosaInfo.com. New dates are being added all the time. And if you're in New York City, come to Joey Rose's. If you're not in New York City and you want to make a trip, come to Joey Rose's. JoeyRose'sNYC.com for all of the info on the spot that serves both alcohol and sandwiches at amazing prices. Open Tuesday through Sunday at 12 p.m. every day. JoeyRose'sNYC.com. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds. Welcome to T A S T E Buds, a very special Joe DeRosa birthday dish. <laughs> Look at this. Thank you to V for setting this all up. We got this is a so McDonald's nice. birthday, like when you were little. It was surprise. Birthday <laughs> to you. you. Thank you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Joey Ditch de Rosa. Happy birthday to you. Woo! There you go. I just blew hot wax all over my finger. Yeah, it's going to be a good birthday. It's going to be I a good birthday. I didn't make a wish either. I forgot to make a wish. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I was just thinking about how I can't drink this because it's ice cream. Oh, that's right. Don't worry. I know someone who can have it. <laughs> um, that looks so good. Uh, it does look good. Yeah. I love it. She even got the red uh, the red and yellow candles. This is awesome. That's great. Thank look you, V. This. Thank you, Pimp. This All right, is come great. Come on out, Ronald. <laughs> know, that would have been crazy. Imagine we had an X-rated show like Ronald and Grimace came out and like in fur like furries and like did oh something God. to each like other. A donkey show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I just we, we got you a Grimace show. <laughs> I just realized Chris Chris could be a good Ronald McDonald. He picture Chris in the makeup. It looks right, doesn't it? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's amazing. That's this I, is so. This is oh, the, that's a great thing to do for Halloween. That'd be a good one, right? Just like 30 Ronald McDonald's. That's good. That's creepy, especially this year. Yeah. Um, this Loving was a the surprise. Shirt, I Loving didn't know. the shirt. This is the, to push you, right? That I is. got the Taste Bud socks on. Yes. Which you can't see because they're on the table. Taste, and that was the limited edition New York This is my Knicks. first public wear of it. Whoa. Yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah, I love it. It's a great shirt. Um, merch. Merch is available for Taste Buds and everything else on our websites. This was all a surprise. I didn't know anybody was doing this. I was very touched. This is the closest to a surprise party I've ever had. I've never really? had a surprise party. You've never had a surprise Have party? You? I've had a few in my life. A few? I mean, I'm... <laughs> I, I, For you? The, oh, wait, I was part the, of one The of ratio them. isn't that big. <laughs> the ratio is not that much because I'm alive a long time now. Um, I had a 37th surprise that was a huge one. We had a yacht rock band. It was like a big one. There was like... Who planned Past it? foods. Who planned it? Friends? Uh, my, my, no, my, my gal. That's, I think, why I've never had one. I've never had a steady gal. <laughs> I think that's how who planned My parents it. threw me one when I, <laughs> when I was little. My parents threw me one. My parents threw me three in my life. I remember one when I was, like, I think probably somewhere around 19, 18. And then I had one as a kid. I remember that one. And then, uh, yeah, there's been a few. I, th my parents never could have planned a surprise party for me as a kid because of my utter demand that a party be thrown for me as a child. Yeah, you can't demand a surprise party. No, you? I'm saying like it, I, they, they didn't have a chance to plan a surprise party because I was talking about my birthday and the party months beforehand. Ah, uh, so you, you they never circumvented it. Yeah, they never could have done. The, you like, usurped it. Yeah, 
Because had they said, we're not going to let you have a party, there would have been issues, I think, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Got it. So you started, I'm to, not plan, proud of that, you started but, to plan the party, and then they had no no choice but to go forth with that party. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, like around. You do plan parties because every year you you let her, you you do you're on top of it. You're like, don't forget, block this out. It's my birthday. I love that. Yeah, well, well, and that's the thing. I as love a, it. As a child, I would have said to my parents, if I had the means to do this myself, I would, but I don't. <laughs> right. So I'm going to need the two of you to take care <laughs> right, of it. Right. I'm thinking Batman this year. <laughs> <laughs> We need this TV show, Young DeRosa. Yeah, oh my God, like Young Sheldon. <laughs> so, oh my God, like a picture of it's like a sitcom, like a picture what the intro is like, like the song and him sitting in the ditch and stuff. You know, <laughs> we get one of the Stranger Things kids. Yeah, yeah. It cuts to the birthday party. It's him alone in a bat suit. <laughs> so the party, the parties were well attended. They okay. were well attended. <laughs> They're always well attended. It was the sleeper neighborhood hit of the season. <laughs> this is also, so this was sort of like a present that it just showed up this time. Roger Beck sent us. He's an artist. Ooh, what are we about to get? Uh, he sent us shirts. Uh, v, I don't think there's one here for you. I'm sorry. It's ca it's packages, pimp. Nice. There's yours. Aw. Oh, sorry. Great. Here's mine. No, Reserves. no. So he designed the Sesame Street thing. Uh. And he says, hey, guys, I hope you enjoy the care package. I'm sorry if I got the shirt sizes wrong. I mentioned You're very, very generous giving me a medium. Very generous. He gave you a mead? <laughs> no, no. Oh, because I got a large. I was like, now I... Okay. I mentioned to this... I mentioned this to Pimp... In a message, but I'd love to create the Taste Bud cereal box if you're interested. Why wouldn't we be? I mean, sure. Yeah. What the f*** are you waiting for, Roger? Get on it. Let's go. What's going on, Beck? Yeah. Uh, thanks for keeping me entertained. Love the pod. Keep up the great work. Love from Toronto, one of my favorite cities in the world. Dave, Show the camp. In Toronto in October. Beck, come on out. That's great. That's awesome. Oh, my God. I didn't even notice the detail. We're wearing our shirts. It's unbelievable. Look, I'm wearing my WrestleMania shirt, and you're wearing your Wu Tang shirt. Beck, reach reach out to uh to V or, or what's our what's our what's our email address? And hit us up. I'll get get you tickets for Toronto. Uh, love from Toronto, Roger at Roger James. You can follow Roger. He's an amazing artist. This is wonderful. Can you pass that to V for like our archives? Yeah, sure. So then, also big shout outs. Whoa, These came so on the cool. same. Dude, can you believe I've been collecting stickers again? You know, this is down. Sorry, I've been collecting stickers again recently because I put it on my weed box. There's pins in here. I see pins. There's pins too. too. This guy's awesome. Jeez, Louise. My friend uh, James James Pinkstone, who you've met, Sal. We had a big day in the city with him. Do you remember that? <gasps> Johnny Five. Do you remember that <laughs> or no? Your friend? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, he collects. He collects old. Um, Remember those stickers you got out of the machines, the horror movie stickers that were like, if you turned them, it was like, not that they moved. They had like the silver, you know what I'm talking about, the movie stickers that had like the silverish like tint to them, and they had like prism colors yes, in them. Yes, 100%. He they collects, were like foil stickers that like yeah. glimmered. He can collects. I, can we also see that? I'll, I'll bring that up later. I'll bring that up later. He collects those, and he's got this, uh, the second biggest collection in the world. He was. How does he know that? Because he he's like in collector groups and stuff and they compare collections and stuff like that. What? And it's why it's really such a there's, weird... there's data, data gathering and processing. I mean, it's on adult sticker collections. I didn't challenge him too hard on yeah, the claim. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a, well, it's so specific. It's though. such a niche weird One thing. One of the biggest collections, but second, it's, which is the guy that roams the earth. That's first. How many more house, house, how, how many know. stickers short is he from the first police price? I think only one or two. Hold on. According to Fisher, the largest... Well, this is collection of stickers. He's talking collection of prism stickers. Now, this is a specifically. subset. No, this, he's a subset. Right, he's a subset. This is, yeah. This dude who has the most of them, uh, at least as of nine years ago, <laughs> nine years ago, he was the world record holder. Uh, I don't want to butcher his name. Nidhi Bansal. Uh, 102,317 to, to the sticker, by the way, they counted. Someone sat there from Guinness... Imagine that, like you you work for Guinness and we're like, all right, we got one for you today. And you're like, yes, what am I going to see? The world's longest neck. 
Am I gonna see? You know, am I gonna see the biggest? Uh, you know, uh, vintage pornography collection. What am I gonna see? No, you're gonna count. 102,317 stickers. And then you got to recount it. Yeah. Well, because isn't it like the Walk of Fame where you just pay for it? I think you have to qualify and then, then pay for it. Um, also, shout outs, speaking of stickers, to Chortle Comics. Uh, Chortle Comics, he, this guy does great work too. Really interesting. But he's got a Kickstarter right now. I think it's Kickstarter. Oh, you know what? I For a split second, I actually thought... You remember when I went on a scavenger hunt? Yeah. And there was a... There, <laughs> is it funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you remember Tuesday when I was doing my scavy hunts? Um, I, I, I got a clue and I thought it had to do... Somehow or another, I linked it to Chortle Comics and I followed them for a second because I was going to write them to see it and then I realized it was the wrong clue and I unfollowed them but I didn't realize you, you knew them. You follow them. I didn't realize yeah, you knew yeah, them. Yeah, I had yeah. no idea. I didn't realize. He's doing comic book. He's trying to launch a line of comic books based on all of us. Who's all of us? What do you mean? All of us. His first comic that he's launching is called Hoagie and it's based on me and I play a man that wears a hoagie suit everywhere. This Are you is kidding me? No, I'm not when kidding. Did this come to fruition. He's raising money for it. There you go. He's raising money yeah, he's to like, make a comic about you as a hoagie. He's got a Kickstarter campaign. What did a, what did Hoagie say to his lawyer? Please, man, you got to help me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, issue what? issue number one, Hoagie. Oh my god. It's wild. Wait, what, 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 what are you? You look demonized there. I'm like a guy that dresses. I haven't read it yet because I, I don't have a copy yet. But wait, do you, do you have a personal relationship with this No, fellow? he just started sending me stuff, and he was like, I want to make- You don't know him? Uh, personally, no. I know him through uh, Instagram. What an odd series of events. It is. Uh, it looks awesome. Oh, this is a, bu a book. Uh, what do you call this? A page? What do you call those things? A bookmark. Bookmark, yeah. Yeah. But oh, that's he dope. July 19... Oh, no, that he made that post. Hold on. That's the wrong thing. Yeah, look. Here's the... Oh, Indiegogo. I'm sorry. Not, not why doesn't he design? Why doesn't he design a shirt for us? He, I'm sure we he would. We should see if Bex would, will let us... If, he, if he'll, he'll, he'll let us sell this as a shirt. Or maybe we could do, work something out with him. Or this guy here. Indiegogo campaign. He's trying to raise 20 grand. He's got about 1,000 raised. So he's got a little ways to go. <laughs> yeah. But help the kid out. <laughs> he's got 95% of the way to go. Help the kid but, out. But, but we, they didn't but look, know about it. there's a video there. He sent, me, he sent me pages that he's drawn. What, what $20,000? You can get a Kia for that. <laughs> he sent me... <laughs> you, he you guys want one episode of Joe as a hoagie, or does somebody right, want not, a let's, let's, no, a no, nice no. sedan? Let's support the kids. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, also, yeah. like... Yeah. A, believe, get, I'm sure 20000 is what it costs these days. Do you get final say? Like, what if your character starts? I don't know. I I, I could care less. <laughs> I said to yeah, him, like, I go, what if? Yeah, what if your character is not all you think it's cracked up to he be? He sent me some of the pages that look fine, and I said to him, I go, look. I, he goes, do you, can, can I get your blessing? What if you're a Jared Fogel type? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my god, it's all hoagie. No, he goes, can I get your blessing? And I go, dude, as long as you're not saying any crazy racist shit or whatever. Yeah, you got my blessing. So, so you in the comic, you're not hoagie. You're Joe DeRosa as hoagie. I, th I believe so. I'm dressed in a hoagie suit, kind of like Tim in, what's his face, in the hot dog suit. Oh, in Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like in, I think you should leave. Yeah. Shout out Tim Robinson. But go to- uh, Sam Richardson. I think the, you should leave. Support the Chortle Comics campaign on Indiegogo and help him get these comics made. He sent and me Zach. pictures of other people. I'm trying to find them. Of other comedians. Look, he sent me togi tattoos. I got hoagie tattoos in here. Temp tattoos. No, you don't. I yeah. mean, I want a hoagie temp tattoo immediately. I'll give it to you. What do you mean? You Look, here's pages <gasps> from the thing. There's hoagie temp tattoos in here? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can make... We can, Look, here's, can, we, here's we have Chris. Temp, we Look, have to get temporary tattoos for our merch. Here's Chris and... and the, here's uh, Pimp and the Pig. Uh, you, <laughs> really? Yeah, it's you and DiStefano in a field in, of pigs in together. The, in the comic book? It, yes, I'm telling you. Wait, I love this. Guy. How does it, who is he marketing the comic to though? To comedy fans. Who the hell do you think he's marketing? Oh, it so to? the comic book is going to be marketed to comedy fans. Yeah, here's one of Kreischer as a bear. Like he's he's trying to do a line of comic. Oh, that's the so twenty fun. grand isn't. I don't think it's just for mine. He's okay. trying to get this series started, okay. where he can make these comics that are based on comedians and like that's so fun. their lives and their humor and. 
it, it's all elevated and exaggerated. So, like, I'm a guy that wears a hoagie suit because I have a hoagie shop. Chrysler <laughs> dresses as a bear in his. Right on the nose. Chris it's, is hanging out with pigs. This is um. You got googly eyes in here too. Yeah, it's in googly. Wait, eyes. where where is the uh, where is the tattoo? The things are the hoagies. The pictures, the the little cards with hoagies. I think are temp tattoos. Oh, <gasps> I want that. Because he sent me a picture of that. Yes. Yeah, take some of them. Oh, it's just of a hoagie though, not of you. But honestly, if we can make temp tattoos, I want a real tattoo for, of a hoagie. For, if we can make oh, temp tattoos one. for merch, want to get taste bud tattoos? I'll get a real one. Want to get them? I'll get a taste yeah. bud tattoo. You'll get a real taste bud tattoo. Yeah. I'll get a hundred, a hundred percent get it. Yeah. I got to think about what it is, but yeah, a hundred percent. I'll get that's it. That's fun. We should get merch. We should get temp tattoos like for merch. That. I, I love like it. That. Yeah. Let's but, do it. But there is one thing I'm, I'm dying to know. How did your road trip go? I don't think anyone knows about your trip. Let's start from the beginning. First so, of all, happy birthday. Thank you. As I approached my 45th birthday, I, t- I bought a new car in LA and decided to drive it home. Uh, which was amazing. Oh, you know what else is weird? Yeah, hold on. So Joe decides to buy. You, whoa, whoa! Look at this toy. <laughs> you know what else is weird? The, this toy. What is this toy? So Thor. How is that? Wait, Thor? wait, wait! Don't open it. Don't open it. Which one? Okay, I'm not going to open mine. Open yours. I'll tell you why. Why you're not going to open yours? Is it a collector's item? I'll tell you why. Another weird coincidence. When I was in San Francisco, which was the beginning of the trip. After one of the shows, a Taste Buds fan, she came up to me and she gave me one of these toys and it was of Thor. And she goes, this is from a McDonald's Happy Meal. I know you love McDonald's. This is for you. And she gave it to me and I kept it and I have it in my house now. And I'm not going to open this because I didn't open that one. I'm going to see if I can get all of them uh, You're together. falling right into their hands. Well. You're going to collect them all? You know. This is a, some type of a ram or a bull are these things ever? They worth look like money? My Little Ponies. I don't are know how they're ever? from the Thor universe. I, yeah, I you bet you, like, I bet you like there's a few like really old ones. I still have my Alf Burger King ish from uh, Alf did a big Burger King promo in like the, the I want to call it the late '80s, early '90s ish. There's puppets. There was all this stuff. Yeah, all the Alf puppets. Yeah, one said rock and roll. Oh, check this out: the 15 most expensive Happy Meal toys from McDonald's. Let's see it, pimp. 1983, the Hot Wheels that came out in 1983. There was 14 of them, uh, cars and all. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Has to be the value of forty dollars. Okay. So you could save this for exactly forty years, Joe, and it'll get up to forty bucks. <laughs> Clone Wars Happy Meal box. Okay. Star Wars is fifty dollars. Okay. Transforming food. 70 beans. Oh, that's cool. I had those. Oh, they, oh they, they, I thought they would be Transformers. They're not, they are. They're, they're they are. called they, changeables. Yeah, but they turn into robots. They do? Yeah. Wait, wait. I had those. I think I still have one of them. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? I don't know what they change. Where do, you see, where do you see that? They're Transformers. They transform into robots. They're just I not the McNuggets, brand of Transformers. Takes. Remember when McNuggets came in the yellow styrofoam? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I miss a, it. Potato Head Kids, 1987. 100, all right. 100 clams. They're going up. Minion's been around for nine years already? Yeah. Wow, Minion is $120? Okay. Furby. Whoa. You fucks with Furbies? (laughs) I fucks with Furbies. You did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. They were hot for a second. I remember my, my, my niece or my sister or somebody had them, had one. Remember Tamagotchi? That was crack. Yeah. That was crack. Yeah. yeah I don't My sister that? used to have Tamagotchi and she used to neglect them. And I used to have to like I used to be have anxiety about the goddamn Tamagotchi. What trauma? Gonna, You've been through so it? much. Your sisters tortured you. They did. What's Tamagotchi? <laughs> Tamagotchi was like that little thing you put on like your key ring. It was like a little screen like a what do you call it? A digital pet. And you had to feed it and clean it and bathe it and all that jazz. And it would grow or it could it could die. You could bathe it? I, th- I think you had to do. I think you had to do all the all the, the things to it. It's weird. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah, you, maybe weird. maybe you didn't bathe it. Maybe you washed it or hosed it down. Or maybe you didn't. Wait a minute. Did you have a pet rock? You had to clean up its crap. No. And shit. Did anybody have a pet rock? I didn't buy one, but I had like one. Like I remember I when it came out, though. Oh, you made your own pet yeah. rock. That's good. The uh, <laughs> Fraggle Rock. I had these. Let's see what these are worth. I 
think I had these. Whoa. Wow. Wait, 92? No, I didn't. That was too old at that point. Inspector Gadget. Oh, the 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 Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Live action Inspector Gadget is worth 350. Who's paying who's Jesus paying Christ. not that money for that? Collectors. Toy collectors. Yeah, but I don't give a shit. Like, I mean, you're not a, a toy Matthew collector. Broderick. You're not a collector. Yeah, but I my my one of my closest friends is a collector. He's not paying 350 for that. Wow. Dude, the Happy One was out in 79. Wow. Underwater monsters. Dude, oh, I do those things expand? I think yep. so. Yep. 400. I didn't know that Happy Meal came out in 79. What year was the Happy Meal invented, Pimp? Let's see. Beanie Babies, $450, number one of all time. Uh, do Beanie Babies still hold their value, or did that whole thing go kaput? I think it's like Bitcoin. Like, they were valuable, and then that, that's it. Market dictates, you know? 79. Like the, the people that were spending their mortgages on Beanie Can I have babies. one of the hot mustards <laughs> in that bag? Are they, are they, like, in bad shape right now? I would say so, if I had guess. Yeah, people love those fucking things. You guys, if any of you collected Beanie Babies, write in the comments uh, right now. Let us know if they're still worth something, what your most valuable one is, if, if, it, all, if it all imploded. Is Beanie Babies still a thing? Here you go. Family ruined by 100K Beanie Baby what? investment. What did it say? For one stuffed animal? Oh, it's honey mustard. Those bastards. I thought it was hot mustard. On, on your birthday. How's the food? How's the food? It's fucking great, dude. <laughs> it's McDonald's. Oh, of course, you know, if you Do we watch have any this cheeseburgers show, you know, or anything? You know why we got McDonald's. This has a cheeseburger in it? All right, that's awesome. So what, what did happen Joe's on your favorite, ha- Joe's happy place. This is it. Joe's favorite place on earth is McDonald's. Yeah. so that's why. And Venetia did point out he asked for this on air. He wanted this party. Yeah, yeah, no. I, we could we could have surprised you with it, but you demanded it. <laughs> you, they did surprise me with it. Yeah, because when we talked about it, we said we were going to go to a bar and hire men to dress up as the oh, characters. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, which which was would have been interesting. All right, weekend's just starting. Yeah, I know. Slices. I know. The. Uh, I know. I, I got to say, I don't approve that of McDonald's doing this. The apple slices. That is a that's a farce to me. Why? Because it's it's we know what it is. Like we know what we're doing here. Why are you putting apple slices into the box? They did that because pe- they had to for it to pass as some yeah, sort of. Yeah, they, but they're trying to get deal. they're trying to get other people in there and, and, and buying stuff off the menu. I don't think they're trying to get anybody in. I think they're trying just, to appease the. the I think masks. they're like legally we have sure. to do this so we can say children can eat this. Right. So what anyway. happened on the road, man? What'd you learn? Go, wait, start from the beginning. You flew to California, decided out there that you were going to buy a brand new... First of all, your Jeep, what happened to the Jeep? The Jeep, you know, it's... Look, it's it works, and it's fine. It's just... Do you still have it? I'm selling. I'm in the process of selling it. It just requires a certain amount of upkeep, and after a while, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I'm not, like... Where I, is it being housed, the Jeep, right now? I have it at my mom's house. Right. In fact, would you put it in a local paper or something? In fact, the mechanic that I take it to for upkeep today was like, oh, you're selling it? I'm actually interested, which is great. But but anyway. Um, oh, no. We'll see. You know, but um, but my my point is, is I wanted something more reliable. I had paid for, outright for the Jeep. I got a good deal on it during the lockdown because of the lockdown. And so when I left for LA, I was like, when I get back, first order businesses, I got to get a new car. I was out in LA doing shows and stuff. I went to San Fran first. And I found myself at a Ford dealership and I saw a car that I really wanted. How did you find yourself at one? I went past one and they had the car I was looking for. And I said, I'm not going to be able to find that in, in New York. And that's it. I'm okay. going to buy it. Why couldn't you find it in New York? Because it's, it's the the new Broncos, and they're very hard to come by. Only in L.A. Uh, it only happens in L.A., or they're only hard to come by in L.A.? I was just like, you know, only in New York? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, I can move a few things around. Like, I, I, I'm open enough that I can do a road trip, and I did. The balls it takes 
to be on vacation or work for a temporary amount well, it was of time. A work, that was a work trip. But you were 100% on the opposite side of the country. Yes. And you decide to buy, not lease or rent, buy I a new car. I couldn't lease it because I didn't live there. Yeah, yeah. Immediately drive it back. Yeah. Oh, you can't lease out of state? No. Sure you can. I've done it in Jersey. Yeah, well, maybe in Jersey. In California, you can't do it. Oh. That's a California law. I went to three dealerships to make Only sure. Only in California. Went to three dealerships to make sure they weren't <laughs> they lying, were lying to me. To you? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there was all these dealerships. Oh, around. so you did compare money. Compare no, no, no. I, I just. How'd you know you got a good deal? Because I made them. I mean, dude, I'm a promise. Pain, I'm a pain in the ass, dude. Like, <laughs> with shit like that. I asked question after question. Like, I made them sit there. They were like, well, here's the blue book value. I go, no offense, but I'm, I'm good at it. Like, I'm nice about it. But I go, no offense. You seem like a good guy. I want you to you sit. You told him that. Yeah, I go, I, that. I go, I want you to show me the Blue Book website where it says that. And he was like, well, what do you mean? It's a, and I go, no, no, no. You handed me a piece of paper that says that. I mean, I could have made this. Show it to me. I just did a lot of that. And, and what happened? Did it check out? Yeah, he showed it to me. So it did check out off the paper. Yeah. Oh, so you took him to task for nothing. Yeah, but I didn't. I said it in a way where I go, I go, put yourself in my shoes. You understand? Sure, and he, sure. he's like, dude, I get it. Don't worry about it. But I asked. I, 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 I was there for a long time. <laughs> and also, too, in my past, I will say this. In my past car buying experiences, they said certain things that were tip-offs to me. This was the main one, that they weren't fucking around. You think someone's been tipped off? Tipped off, you know. Seinfeld, that's from Seinfeld. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this was the main one. They said, so that these Broncos are hard to find, right? The guy was like, the whole time he was just like, hey, man, like, it's a great car and you seem to like it. Like, I don't know. Like, I think it'd be cool if we could figure something out. Like, and that's, he left it at that. Okay. I can't tell you how many fucking cars when I've gone to the dealership. They don't let you go. The one sentence they say is, do what you want. I mean, this thing will be gone tomorrow. They all yeah. say that. Yeah. This is a car that, in fact, would have been gone. As it was parked, they had to take it off a ramp they had it on, like a display ramp. Okay. After I test drove it, as it was parked outside, and he was starting to work, people were circling it. And I was like, dude, 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 people are looking at it. And he was like, I got the key. Don't worry. It's ours. Don't worry. But, you know, like, but like, he, that's the one time in my life where a salesman could have said it and applied pressure, and it would have been a thousand percent true. And the fact that he didn't meant two things. Number one, the car actually is in demand. He doesn't have to do that. And number two, he wasn't fucking with me. He was just like, dude, this is what it is. What was the price? And they they worked with me. I got the price. How much did you still haggle? How much would you say you got it down? Uh, Thousands of dollars. Thousands from the original price they gave you. I 100% got it down thousands of dollars. Did he have to go back and talk to the manager? The guy he was talking to, he was letting me talk to. And then I started talking to that guy. Was this a Bronco dealership? Is that is that a thing? It's a Ford. A dealership. Ford dealership. Okay. Mm-hmm. That It'd makes be sense. a Ford. T- <laughs> that's like me. That, that's like me calling like New Brunswick a state. Right. It's like I did that thing yeah. where I called the city the state. You go to McDonald's. You go. Is this a quarter pounder dealership? <laughs> well, it's a McDonald's, sir. So, <laughs> and and Bronco was your vibe, yeah. What 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 about the Bronco? When I got- First of all, the new one is super cool. I want an old one. I want an old That's one. That's what started me. Yeah. I wanted an old one. Then they came out. and I, But my thing with the old ones was, I mean, you want to talk upkeep. I was like, I, I have no idea how to take care of a Bronco that old. Because the ones that look cool were the ones from the 70s or earlier. Yeah, to be fair, I was trying to get a refur- like a, a old body, but refurbished. Right. And that costs a lot of money. Yeah. And then they came out with the new ones. And I was like, holy shit, that looks like the old ones, but it's a new car. And then I was like, that's it. drive? I was sprung. It's the best car I've ever owned. Really? It's amazing. You had fun driving across country? Yeah, dude. To all the people that want to eat on the show, <laughs> oh, yeah. no. your wish is coming true now. Tell me if you, tell me if you like it after this episode. Dude, I, I slept in it two nights. Two of the AMSR. nights. AMSR. McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's AMSR. <laughs> two eat of on the, the nights. show. Eat on the show. We want to see you eat. <laughs> <laughs> two of the nights I slept in it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I wanted to. Because that's part of the adventure. You can't go on a road trip 
Here's here's elements of a road trip. You ready? Say the sentence you were just about to say. First of all, you can't go on a road trip and what? Not sleep in your car? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. Yes. Are you insane? Yes. What a crazy thing to say. That's not crazy. Most people that go on road trips do not sleep in their Here car. Here are the elements of a road trip. Ready? Yeah. Folks, come on. Let's level. And when we level, we talk about Dave. We've all been, a, not a guy, by the way, a sponsor, Dave. Uh, we've all been in a situation at some point where, you know, look, you're tight on cash, all right? It could be for gas money or day-to-day stuff. Uh, it could be that you need to buy a big purchase uh, for maybe uh, you're going to a wedding. You need some cash to get that wedding gift. Maybe it's a person you love quite a bit. You don't want to show up empty-handed. Whatever. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's for somebody else. But sometimes you need some cash, and that's where Dave can help. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, all right, you're struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful. I've been there. I've been in situations where you don't have a lot of fluid cash on hand. And all. And I get it. I get the perspective of, hey, well, if I don't have cash on hand, then what am I worrying about, you know, buying things for other people or whatever? It's not the point. Don't get hung up on the specifics. The the the, the, po- the point is is you got to live your life, and sometimes that involves having to contribute to somebody else's, and sometimes that has to do with contributing to your own. Either way, sometimes a little extra cash can help. And Dave, that's more money to fill the tank, buy the gift, catch up on bills, whatever. Again, it could be for you. It could be for somebody else. It could be to help somebody else. It could be to help yourself. It could be for all of you. There's no interest Uh, And there's no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. And if you're in a pinch and you need some help, download Dave and get a helping hand. All right? So download the app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account. Get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking is provided by Evolve, member FDIC. The future you will thank you. For your summer travels, folks. Are you traveling around? Some people take trips in the summer. Summer's trip time. I know it doesn't have to be. It could be any season, but it's summer, and it's summer's trip time, and you know what I mean. Let's talk Babel. Maybe you're going to a place where they're speaking a language that you do not speak. That's where Babel could help. Babbel is addictively fun and easy to learn a foreign language because they have bite-sized language lessons. So you got some time now to learn a new language. That's great. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. I have a friend who uh, is talking about moving out of the United States permanently, as as many people are these days. And she said she doesn't want to go uh, until she could learn the language of the country she'd moved to. And I said, well, try Babel. That's how you're going to learn it quick. If you want to get the hell out of here, you better move quick. Babel can help. Other learning language apps, they use AI for their lesson plans. But Babel, <laughs> these lessons were created by over 150 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. You can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. So right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash taste buds. That's babbel.com slash taste buds for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel language for life. Random hotels, crashing with friends, staying in the car a couple nights. Or camping, one of the, one of those two. I know what you mean. Like, it was too hot to camp. I would have camped. I would have bought a fucking tent and camped. Wait, wait. But it was so fucking hot. Wait, I was like, I'll, I'll. Where did you find a place to pull? Also, it's the summer. You you slept with the two, car off with times, no air condition. Two, well, I it was at night. It was very very late at night when I pulled over to sleep. I'm talking like four a.m. So the car was cool enough because I'd been driving for a while. Where did you pull and over? And then it didn't get too hot. Where did you pull over that you were safe? And the windows are tinted, too. A truck stops. You pull in a truck stop. So what the fuck's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure. You can't have a calculated adventure. You can't? I had bad experiences out there. I had amazing experiences. The whole thing was everything I could have wanted, dude. I saw, I saw the sunset in Kansas. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. 
I drove up into the mountains of Utah to watch a sunset. I mean, it's life changing shit. Right. I drove through. I drove I'm through a major fucking storm. I drove through a major fucking storm in Kansas in pitch black, Fun. dude. Where all you could see in it's front right, of you, right ahead of you, was lightning touching down hundreds of miles. Now, were away. you nervous or were you like, "Fuck yeah, I'm in the Bronco"? I was terrified. Oh. I was. I felt safer because uh, I had four wheel drive and everything, and I was like, yeah. "I was like, okay, dude, as long as you pay attention, like you'll be okay." All but right. I was terrified, dude. You couldn't see. I'm not exaggerating. In any direction you looked, you could not see past your headlights. I was like, anything could be out there right now. Anything. I couldn't see the edge of the road. That's how dark it was. This doesn't sound smart. It's it not. Also, it was just <laughs> that's what an adventure. It was is. a brand new car. Also, what no, about, see, what? I got a, I got a 2021, but it only had 13,000 miles on it. So it wasn't. So you, it was broken in a little bit. Okay, a little bit. But okay, yeah. okay. So what's the morning routine on this road trip? What is? Oh, you know what's you funny? also just put that many <laughs> miles on it yourself. Yeah, who cares? What's it was three three thousand and change or something like that. But off the off the bat, babe. But it already had third. It was. I'm saying, had it had they driven it off the lot with two miles on it, I might have been a little more put miles on. The way to do it is a cross country trip on the seat of your pants. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Live a little. What are we yeah. doing here? We're on this planet to have. You know, this is it. I want to have an experience. Yeah. Why? If I can't put three thousand miles on a fucking Ford Bronco, what car can I put three thousand miles? Point what taken. am I gonna do? People always stress the mileage. You got to keep it down. You got to. Yeah, what you are we gonna, gonna buy? A Kia Soul. That's the car to do it with. But when you're trying to flip it, if you have those like two. Hundred thousand miles, you're not going to get what you want. I don't think I'll ever flip it. I think I will drive it until it's done, and and then that'll be that. Wow! It's not the, it's not a kind. It's not, in my opinion, so far, it's not the kind of car you flip. It's the kind of car you go. I'll 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 bring it up to the mountains and stash it there for when I go up to the to the lake house or whatever. Which hopefully by then I'll have some, some sort of property to my name. So you, yeah, I told you I, you said you were going to buy a house. Now you bought a truck instead. Well, I yeah, I financed it. I didn't I didn't go in and plop down the money. Okay, or whatever. But so 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 when okay so okay mm -hmm. you're pulling out of L.A. You put on your blinker. Do you know where you? How often did you know where you were going? And how often were you like, let me decide where to go while I'm driving? All I knew was when I left L.A. All I knew was. My first stop is going to be Vegas. I can get as far as Vegas tonight. My friend Amy lives there. I texted her. No, she doesn't. <laughs> I texted her. I said, I'm coming in. Are you around? She's like, yeah. I go, okay, I'm making my first stop in Vegas. I'll see you there. I'll come. I'll say hi. We'll get dinner. And then I'll figure out what I'm doing next after that. Away from me. And she said, Don't okay. And that's what I did. And we went out to dinner, and I was debating on if I wanted to spend the night in Vegas because part of me wanted to, like, go to old Vegas and, like, maybe crash in a casino for a night and, like, whatever. And then I was like, nah. It's probably not a great way to start the trip is by, like, drinking 27 free whiskeys as sure. I gamble money away sure. that I'm going to probably need. Cut to like yeah. five hours later, Joe's in like a Texas Hold'em game and he yeah. throws the keys to the Bronco in the middle. Did you ever see uh, <laughs> Lost in America? That's the other reason I didn't do it. Well, what, why anyway, do I know what that sound, what it sounds like? It's an Albert familiar. Brooks movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Lost in America is about, uh, it's an Albert Brooks movie where two yuppies that live in LA, they get, they give up their entire, they liquidate everything so they can drop out of society. And the first stop they make on that, they buy an RV that they're going to live in. And the first stop they make is Vegas. And while he's asleep, the wife mm -hmm. gets like into a gambling craze and gambles everything away. It's one of the funniest movies ever. I got to give it a rewatch. I saw it there's, as a kid. There's an amazing scene. Uh, Albert Brooks plays an advertising exec. There's an amazing scene where he... Gary Marshall plays the casino, the head of the casino. Wow, Gary Marshall. And Albert Brooks at 4 o'clock in the morning his pajamas pitches to him. He's like, I've got a great idea. You give us the money back. It'll be great publicity. And, and Gary Marshall, my favorite line is uh, Gary Marshall goes, okay, that's enough now. You're a nice guy. You made me laugh and everything. I'll see you later. <laughs> but, uh, but that was going through my head. 
Because so you didn't even stay in Vegas. Well, no, because because the the thing his wife says that makes them stay when they're teetering on should we do this or not. She goes, I know we're supposed to drop out, but just one last night in a big hotel room. <clears throat> and that's what I was thinking. And I was like, that's a bad way to start the trip. So I go, listen, I'm going to keep going. I, you I, informed your trip from a 40-year-old movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I said, look, we got dinner. And I was like, all right, I'm going to keep going. And she's like, all right, where, where are you going? I go, well, it looks like I'm going through Utah. And she was like, okay, get to Moab. And I was like, all right, I won't make it to Moab tonight, but I can get as far as Beaver. <laughs> so she's like, all right. She goes, book your hotel now. I go, it'll be fine. Like, Beaver's not like a crazy city. There's tons of hotels there. I'm looking at them right now. They all have availability. I'll be okay. I get to Beaver. None of them had availability. <laughs> oh, no. None. What were you looking at? Dude, I was calling everything. I was calling everything. But you said there was plenty of availability. Yeah, the f turns out the internet was wrong. I don't know what was going How on How could that Beaver. be possible? I don't know what was going on in Beaver, dude. It was <laughs> packed. It was packed. It was Beaver crazy. Beaver was stuffed, right? <laughs> well, there's all the tourist routes, and there's like buses of tourists that just pull up, and they'll take Why over. the Beaver, though? It's probably on the sense. way to the Grand Canyon. or. Oh, exactly. By the way, folks, this might turn into a two-part episode. Let's <laughs> warn everybody now so nobody gets mad if that's what happens. But I don't want to rush the story. It's a good story. No, I'm into it. So anyway, so I get to Beaver. I'm calling place after place. Everybody's like, we're sorry, sir. We're, we're, and I'm like, I'm, now I'm starting to freak out. And I'm like, oh, my God, did I make a huge mistake? <laughs> right? Stuck in Beaver. So I call a Super 8. Oh, no. And the no. guy, hold on, hold on. You don't, me, even, you don't even Not know. You don't even know, dude. You don't even know. I don't even call know. that Super 8. I don't even call it. I just drive through the night. I was down to the last two hotels. I called a Super 8, and the guy goes, yeah, we have rooms. I go, how much? He goes, $279, right? I would have I was so I would have drove there just to, just to go into the lobby up to the front desk and told him to go fuck himself. I was so mad. <laughs> I would have drove there. And then I called another place called the Western Inn. I think best, it was called the best Western West, Inn. Best Western? No. No, 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 no. I think it was called the Western Inn. Wait, is this also the goddamn straw? It's a straw. It's like a spoon I'm straw. I'm supposed to suck it through a large square straw? Yeah, because I mean, it's thick. Kudos, but I mean, like, I'm not going to. And it's got an air hole. Look, it's got a carb on it. Nice. Like a bong. <laughs> what? On the front of the straw. What do you do with that? I don't know. Try it. You go scuba diving. Wait, the what? There's more than one hole. There's a hole here and here. You go snorkeling. Why does it have the hole in it, though? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not, I don't think. It's just... But but wait, they, but then it, the straw won't work because it's got a hole in it. I don't think this is a straw, bro. Oh, it's just a spoon. So then, why is it this big square spoon with two holes in it? V saying a machine goes into it. How is that good? It's fair. Fair. Yeah. Wow. All right. I had a cookies and cream a shake from Ralph's Ices two nights ago. I mean, yeah, come on, dude. What are so we? So I'm not. Yeah. I mean, not, no offense, Ronald. Did you see Wendy says a strawberry smoothie now? A strawberry frosty. Excuse frosty. Me. Yeah, no. pretty cool, right? It's about damn time. I never liked the chocolate frosty, but the strawberry one intrigues me. It's about damn time. In but a I minute, I'm gonna eat a strawberry smoothie. Anyway, <laughs> so I go to this place. I believe it was called the Western End. I'm like, do you have rooms? The guy's like, yeah. It's Bedbug City, bro. I go, great. How much? He's like, 70 bucks or whatever. Right. I was like, I'll take it. Very nice guy. Sends me to the room. The room had um, two lamps on end tables on either side of the bed <laughs> that were not plugged in because there were no outlets. Yeah. They were just there. Oh, I mean, we travel a lot. Not to interrupt you, but apropos here. Is it me? Or is it a challenge to find how to turn on every goddamn light in every single hotel room? You ever get to a hotel room, you're like, all right, let's get some lights on. And then, okay, one one lamp's inev inevitably unplugged. Right. Then one lamp, you look for the little black knob, it's not there. Then you like look for it on that little button on the side, yeah. it's not there. Then you start tapping shit, it's not there. Then you flip yeah. every light, it's not there. Then all of a sudden, you realize it's not plugged in, you plug it in, it still doesn't go on. Then all of a sudden, you see there's a little freaking dial on the plug in the back of the thing behind it with dust. I'm like, and then every single lamp in the whole place has a different way of turning it on. Yeah. 
It, it's basically like a, a, a like a riddle. As soon as you get in there, it's turn okay. on lights. Yeah. Please continue. Want to hear the Waze joke I wrote on the road? Yeah. That I'll never do. Okay. Because it's too old. It's like, who cares? It's Waze. Uh, Waze uh, is still relevant. No, I use Waze all the time, but I'm not going to do a Waze joke. I'll okay. do it here. I'm not going to do it on stage. I mean, I have a story that happened in an happen based around an Uber, even though I don't like doing Uber jokes. But but a story based around is different. Right. This is just an observational joke. And say, wait, uh, hey, Waze, thanks for all the updates. You think you could give me some useful ones? You know what I mean? Uh, alert. There's a paper bag on the side of the road. Is it still there? <laughs> How about you let me know the McDonald's I'm about to pull off on a highway for has been closed for eight months. <laughs> so they go, vehicle stopped on the side of the road. Still there? Hey, Waze, where's the not my problem button? <laughs> yeah, when did, I, when did I become a consultant? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Fresh. With Hello Fresh, you're getting farm fresh pre portioned ingredients, seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trials and the trips to the grocery store. Count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. How about that? It's America's number one meal kit for a reason, folks. Okay? I want you to savor every last second of your summer, enjoy your free time. All right, and with HelloFresh, you can do that because they're delivering fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, allowing you to enjoy dishes, delicious flavors of the season right at home. You're not wasting time in those grocery lines. You're not going to make the trip to the store after work. You're not spending a ton of time cooking. You're getting into the groove and get back into the fall season, right? That's going to get busy. That's going to get busy. Not going to be summer anymore soon folks that fall is creeping up and fall's a wonderful season but we all know that life kind of gets normal again it more normal again in, in in the fall maybe the boss isn't slacking off as much as you'd like him to be so then you can't slack off as look i've been there trust me people i'm my own boss and i'm always hoping i slack off so that i don't have to account <laughs> you get what i'm saying look hello fresh is here to help all right make those weeknights when the fall hits Foolproof with step-by-step -step recipes ready in around 30 minutes or less. All right? I love HelloFresh. I've used their stuff. I made these meals. I use the kits. It's so convenient. It's delivered to your door. It's all picked out for you. It's all laid out. This is the thing to do when you want time. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16 and use code TasteBuds16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three Gifts. Jesus, God. That's HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16. Use code TasteBuds16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Noom. Man, I love Noom. I really like what Noom is doing. Uh, I am in a constant struggle of trying to enjoy life while also losing weight uh, staying mentally healthy, but having fun, all of these things. And th it's a tough balance. It's a tough balance. You say, you know, I, I, I want to have the cake because you only live once. And then you say, I shouldn't eat the cake because why do I do that? Because it's a needless indulgence. And, you know, at the end of the day, this up here is tied to this. The stomach is tied to the brain. And that's what Noom is so great at helping you understand, helping you figure out, all right, like when we decide to lose weight, it's not just about the number on the scale, all right? You want to make a change, and you have a lot of different reasons for that, and a lot of the time, it's 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 based on psychology, and that's why Noom Weight's psychology-based approach empowers you. It empowers you with the knowledge and support to build lasting results, lasting. That's what I like about it. I, I've used this service Uh you understand why you eat certain foods better. Uh, they help you understand why certain foods work better for you. And I don't mean like things like, oh, eating vegetables is better than eating bacon or whatever. It, you know, I'm talking about just some scientific elements to food that I never understood that made me understand 
that's where I feel this way after I eat this certain thing, or, or it's better for me to eat this other thing for these exact reasons. Uh, and, and also, the, I, I know we all know water is important, but they really hammer home why water is important in your life. And it actually reframed my approach to water. We got water on the table right now. Anyway, Noom to date has helped more than 3.6 million people lose weight. Every journey is different. So they're giving you daily lessons that are personalized for you and your goals. And it's a program based on scientific principles like cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, and it's all meant to give you an understanding of your relationship with food. Noom users or Noomers lose an average of 15 pounds in 16 weeks. And 95% of the customers say Noom weight loss, it, it's a great long-term solution. So look, stay focused on what's important to you with Noom weight psychology-based approach. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com slash taste bud. That's singular. Noom.com slash taste bud. That's N-O-O-M.com slash taste bud to sign up for your free trial today. Anyway, well, it would have been a great bit when Waze first came out. Shit. <laughs> I right. love the bit you do about uh, Lyft. I love that bit. About to talk to you like a Guido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great bit. Too. <laughs> great bit. I get a, a boy, Guido. That's boy new, boy. right? Er? It's it's a couple of years old. But yeah, I oh, still, is it? I'll do it, yeah. I've been seeing new st good stuff st I didn't hear from you on the internet recently. Well, I've been, that's what I was out doing initially was working on the new hour, which is almost ready. And I'm very excited about it. But, you know. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, what was I going to say? Okay. So I go into the hotel room in the inn, which I did. A, I took a video of it. The it only had, it only had. It was missing the eye on one side of the sign, so it just said Western Inn. <laughs> Two ends, like with no eye. I go into the room. The room was so, I was so freaked out, and because it had a, it had a smell. I slept on top of That's the covers. Seventy dollars smell. <laughs> yeah, I slept on top of the covers and all my clothes. I've done it. I've done it. I put a towel over the pillows. And then the next day I got out and I bunched up the clothes and threw them in the back of the car. And I was like, I'm not going to wear those again. No, you didn't think it was that bad? How did you fall asleep? There was no way the pillows were I wasn't good. sure. No I, way put, the... I put a towel over the pillows. You slept on a... On, plus that towel is probably rough as hell. No, no, the towel actually wasn't bad. And the and the, they were bright white, like the, lawn, the, the linens in the bathroom. And I was like, they... I bet the sheets were fine. I just... Oh, oh. No, actually, correct me. There were two blood stains. Oh, on the Jesus sheet. Christ. Little, little. Dried, washed, brown. But they were there. Anyway. Let me tell you something, folks watching at home. Don't do this, but if you really want to freak yourself out, no matter what hotel you're in, even if you're in a five-star hotel, you do a little navigation when you get in there, a little, little inspection. Pull off the uh, the mattress cover. No matter where you are, look underneath the mattress cover, like the, the like the topper and the, and the stuff underneath. Or even worse, take that pillowcase off and get to the bottom Are of it. Are they a bad one? And uh, I've got to be honest, I don't do it anymore because it's almost 100, 10, 10 out of 10 times you're going to find something displeasing. So don't subject yourself to it, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> know what you're doing when you're in a hotel room. So... I'll tell you a bad one. I stood in a comedy condo once, and Bobby Kelly called me, and he goes, that condo is fucking disgusting. They don't wash it. And I go, no, it's not bad. It's clean. He goes, I want you to go look in the bedroom. Reach inside the pillow that, uh, you're, that you're sleeping on, and uh, tell me if there's a pair of socks inside of it. If there is, you know they didn't wash the sheets. There was a pair of socks no. inside of it. Yeah. So he did that? He did it to, as a test for me to see if they washed the sheets. Oh, my God. And I never went back to the club ever again. What club? I don't want to say. Out the club! It was in Canada, though. I'll tell you that much. What part? That'll give it away. To the West. <laughs> Edmonton. I'm not going to say any names. But anyway, listen. Uh, so I leave this place. Pimp asks what I eat for breakfast every day. How'd the day start? Pimp, I'm not kidding. I found... In almost every city I stopped in, a place, so I went, so I wake up in Beaver, I find a place that well, specializes in biscuits and gravy. I eat biscuits and gravy almost every day for breakfast. You could call it McDonald's, Joe, it's fine. 
No, dude. This is come on, man. This they is got home- biscuits and gravy. This is homemade. It was sausage gravy. You ever have sausage gravy and biscuits? I have. I mean, come on. I have had that not too long ago, actually. That's how I started almost every day. Because every there were places that just Portland, specialized. In. Portland had tons of southern food. It was yeah. all. It was all. Um, I was just recently there. It was. I mean, all southern comfort food in Portland. It was crazy. Couldn't you, you couldn't find a healthy meal? So, what'd you learn about yourself on the road? What'd you learn? Well, we're we're nowhere near that part yet. <laughs> I learned that. Uh, uh, wait, all right, all right, all right. I want to. I'm loving this. I don't even. I don't even want to stop. I'm just trying to understand. Where are we right now? We're about like forty. This is a two parter. <laughs> but but we're not even going to get to the battle. I say we finish the story in this episode and do the battle in the next part. But will people be up in arms? We control. It's Joe's well, birthday. What we it's do. my it's birthday. Joe's birthday. If guys. You guys don't understand guys, a if you birthday don't understand, episode. This is a special doubleheader, two-hour single battle birthday episode. Leaning up to my the 45th. people's complaints with don't don't make it two two weeks. Make it a two-hour single episode. And I'll tell you something: we cannot do that. We cannot afford to do it. We don't have enough time. So yeah. we got to do an hour per week. We can't start doing two hours in a week because then we will we'll fall behind. Right. And that's that's the deal. So for all of you people, and it's your you're the birthday boy. You're making the call. No, no, no don't extend? put it on me. This is gonna rest. <laughs> this is gonna rest solely on the birthday boy's shoulders. This call. We are. I back you up, but I'm. I'm it is resting on your shoulders. So do you? Sal feel- also was forty minutes late today. <laughs> So let's put that out there as to why we also but, don't have full but time. But you were able to do ads during it, so we really didn't lose any time, thankful yeah, to you. No, it was nice that I did all the ads. Because I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, you know. All right. Let's 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 not waste any more time. All right. So let's keep the people to- that thought they were going to see. To- oh, we, don't, we didn't even say who it was, so we could choose whatever. It is. No, it's McDonald's. Oh, yeah, versus Pizza Hut. Versus Pizza Hut. And here yeah. is... And Joe chose Pizza Hut. Go no, ahead. I did not. How dare you. Um, we're going to get to the battle. He and- wanted... It's his birthday, and he, his wish was to battle for McDonald's again. Because <laughs> he's only done it once about a year and a half ago, and he only just brought it up for all 90 episodes. So he said, what else are you going to put... Because remember, you took a loss to Wendy's last time. Yes. Which was a shock to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and so I said, yeah. all right, fine. You want to do it? I'll put up Pizza Hut against you. All right. So here we are. But we're going to continue, and this is how we're going to do it. You come along for the ride, for better or for worse. This is our journey, and we're going to do a two-part episode split into two weeks with no battle this week. I promise you the story has good parts in it. But how do we put up McDonald's versus Pizza Hut for this episode, and then we just just don't get to it? Just write part one. No, I think we just put Joe's birthday extravaganza. All right. There you go. Pimp to the rescue. Oh, so this one doesn't even have a battle in it. There you go, Pimp. So this is almost like a bonus birthday episode this with no battle. This is your battle. program. <laughs> no, Pip's yes, right. That's how we I'm, title I'm it. I'm doing a technique called deflect. That's how, that's how we title it. Okay. Pip's right. All right, great. Birthday extravagance. All right. Uh, but this I is- wish I had one of those things that's like, <laughs> like the things that roll up and roll back. Yeah. Look at these. No, pads. no, you're good. Did you print these? No. They won't give you the hats First anymore? of all, I was going to hats off to you for, for being so creative. But then I was about to say, that's amazing for McDonald's. But then I'm about to say, what are you trying to pull, McDonald's? I mean, you want me to use my ink and my paper? Like, what are you trying to pull here? Oh, you can do it at home. Is it genius? I like it. I like it. Then until you printed these off the website no. McDonald's. No, no. You printed that off the website? No. I bet they did that for COVID. No, I, I made that. I didn't even see that. Holy shit. That's Can awesome. Can you name everybody on there? Let's go, McDonald's Pro. I Start. want a t-shirt of that. Start. Me too. Birdie. Birdie. Yeah. Grimace. Fry Guys. May, uh, Mayor McCheese. Ronald McDonald. Hamburglar, obviously. Um. <laughs> I got to be honest. I don't remember the names of those back three. The first of all, the guy in the way back, the old man. I've never even I seen don't, him. I don't know that man. No. I know everybody but that man. Uh, I think he's called like, he's a cop, right? A Keystone yeah. cop or something. Yeah. And then the pirate. The pirate, I know he was exist- He existed because I have him on a, on a glass. He represented which food though? I don't know anybody. I don't know who the hell that guy in the back is. 
Is the pirate holding the sword? The guy in the back looks like Santa. <laughs> Captain Captain something has to be the pirate. Okay. Right? And the 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 the, the cop is like he definitely. How can I not remember that? Uh, officer, officer Big Mac. Officer, what if, look, his head is a freaking Big Mac. How do we not get but that? But also, to Officer Big Mac, that's a shit name. Come yeah. on, yeah. <laughs> Captain Crook. Captain Crook. Oh, I guess because he like stole. Oh, he he was the fillet of fish guy. Yeah, but yeah, I mean it's Captain Hook. Yeah, and he was up to sea, and he was upset. They didn't get sued fish. for that. No, what, what was you? Okay, he was the fish guy. But who's the old man? Keep going down. Yep. The professor. Who the fuck is the professor? Dude. A bearded son. Around until 2008? Nah, no way. <laughs> no way. Has anyone ever heard of the professor ever? Ever. I've never seen that man. No, no. Is a bearded scientist type character in a lab coat from 71 to 87. All right, to 87. McDonald's commercials. He served as McDonaldland's local inventor and researcher. In 83, the year that McNuggets, McNuggets became a menu item, he invented live talking delicious food items called the McNugget Buddies. All right, so he was like the guy, he repped the, the McNuggets. Well, he was, he is the least popular for sure. Um, I see. Okay. Yeah, if you look at these old school pictures, look how of them, scary the hamburger it's scary, looks there. Man, it's it's like it's freaky shit, you know. It's yeah, it's kind of like HR puff and stuff. It's like a it's like an acid trip. If what you're looking at, yeah, right. It's like what? Is but look going how scary on? the hamburger. The burger hamburger looks literally there. looks like the new villain in the movie Black Phone. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he, looks like, he looks like Ethan Hawke. I just saw that. He does look like that. That's so funny. Yeah, the captain ain't looking too great either. Yeah, the cap, the captain. So bring us back to the road. Oh, Let's sorry. Go. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Go. So anyway, so I leave Beaver. Most tes <laughs> most Tesla charging stations I've ever seen in my life. Town was lousy with Tesla really? charging stations. <laughs> it's and an odd place. I didn't know what was going on. What have you made it? Like three states now? Two states? Was that four? No, states Utah then? was the second state. Then oh. I went on to. What is Beaver known for? Nothing. I mean, I don't want to, I'm not shitting on them, but like, I don't think anything. Well, that was like the gold rush area, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I left there. I went to Moab. I spent the night in Moab. Moab was great. Uh, I ate dinner by myself in Moab and met a guy that used to write for Rolling Stone magazine and now is a, is a professional painter, meaning he paints things and sells his art. And we were drinking together. We both were sitting alone at the bar. We were both from New York. Did we you tell him you had a food podcast? No. Why would I? Well, he told you what he did. <laughs> oh, no. He, he asked what I did, and I said, I'm a comedian. Yeah, my first line of work isn't usually <laughs> Taste Buds co-host. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you didn't really share with the But guy. we talked for a while. We drank. He was, he was like, he's like, he came, what would he goes, you know, you know Lee Daniels? I go, the director? And he goes, yeah, he goes, that guy's got one of my paintings in his fucking house, man. Nah. <laughs> Is Lee Daniels alive? Yeah, he directed, yeah, he directed The Help, and he directed The Butler, and oh, Lee okay. Daniels. I thought he was old. Am I thinking of someone else, maybe, Daniels? Jeff Daniels? No, no. Buddy of mine. Really? Hmm? Uh, what's he like? Great guy. Yeah? Yeah. Nice guy? Really cool. All right. That's good. I'm not doubting it. I didn't think you just don't have a beat on the guy. Yeah, I don't have a beat. I can't mean, I, get a beat I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't. It's not my. You know, it's, I, we don't have matching taste buds tattoos. But I can't get a beat on the guy. Yeah. Anyway, Moab was amazing. I drove up into Salt the of mountains. The earth. Yeah, watched the sunset. <laughs> Unbelievable. Met an amazing old man up like at one of the lookout points with his wife. And the guy, he said one of the most profound things I've ever heard. Oh, let's take bets on what this is going to be. Let's, okay, okay. Is it? I know you're trying to make fun, but it was profound. I swear to Christ, I'm not. I'm okay. so invo inv oh, invested. All right, all right, all right. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. I'm sorry, I'm so, sorry. So, okay, so <laughs> what category would it fall into? Life advice? Would it fall of things that make you go, hmm? He was literally just giving me advice on how to watch a sunset. Okay. And if you were going to photograph it, what you should do. 
and he didn't realize how poignant what he said to me and, and how metaphoric it was to, to, so you to t- this life journey that I was sort of on. Okay, okay. So he said something about the lens. Like, if you're going to photograph it, there's no flash. That kind of thing. Uh, probably an open lens. He didn't No, he, It wasn't lens specific. It was technique. I'll just tell you. Okay, tell me what he said, Prof. Then you applied. Now, you got to understand something. I'm on a trip. Oh, I know. I start this trip with the idea of not even realizing, oh, my God, it's leading directly into my 45th birthday. I just got back. My birthday's tomorrow. I didn't even put that together. I started this trip thinking I have to start to understand my place in the universe. I have to stop thinking that my life is so important. I have to stop worrying about the bullshit. I have to stop worrying about what other people have, what I don't. I'm going to go, I'm going to not do meds anymore. I'm going to start to try to naturally face the stuff inside of me instead of trying to mask it with all this other stuff. I'm not knocking anybody on meds or anything like that. I've taken them for a long time. This is just a point in my life that I got to a thing I wanted to try. Right? Piece of shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not knocking any... I believe in all that stuff. I'm not going like Scientologist on you. Anyway. So I'm do, I'm going... I'm dealing with all... I'm thinking about all this as I'm driving. And I'm like... And I, I love I, that you... I love this whole thing. And I'm like, I'm going to go out on the road and be by myself for like a week. And have immense amount of time to think about everything. And I'm... And, and the key thing being... This little stuff. And I'm, I'm by the way, I, I, I'm writing at this point. I'm writing, not writing with my hand, but I'm writing as I drive. I'm using my phone recorder and everything. And I start building like these essays that, and I'm like, this would be a great like collection of something. And I was like, oh, I'd make a book and I could call it, I could call it I Ain't Shit. That's a funny title about trying to figure out like there's so much more than me out there and all this stuff. And, you know, stop and smell the roses, all that shit, right? And this guy, when I smell the roses, I almost, yeah, I swear to God. <laughs> That's so funny. Pete Holmes used to say, when I wrote on the Pete Holmes show, when I would add, when I would add like my like take to a monologue, he would go, Is somebody dragging it through the roses? <laughs> <laughs> he was always oh, said, Did you see Shout his out. impression of you, by the way? Shout out Pete yeah. Holmes. Yeah, Shout out Pete that. Holmes. What an amazing. I never met Pete. I know. He was like, I barely know him, but I feel like this is a good impression. I was like, <laughs> it's fucking spot on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's anyway. basically, you know, old Jewish woman, maybe. <laughs> I almost didn't talk to this guy because he was with his wife. They were much older than me. He had his camera. And I'm in this big black Bronco with tinted windows, and I don't know anything about what I'm doing to try to watch this sunset up on these mountains. And I'm like, I look like an asshole. You need directions to watch the sunset, though? Because because there were so many lookout points, and, and they were rated and ranked. Oh, okay. And I was like, why? what's the difference if I watch from here versus over there? And I was trying to figure it out, but I didn't want to ask this guy for help because I felt like I looked like such a young... I felt like I looked like a punk. You know what I mean? Coming up with my big dumb truck. Hey, where do I want to sit? You know what I mean? Like, so I must didn't talk to him. And he was about to drive away. He had his window up. He was in a minivan with his wife. And I was like, fuck this. This, I'm out here to try to be better. So I started walking towards his car. And he rolled down his window. And he goes, I like your ride, man. And I was like, oh, thanks. And, I, and then I was like, okay. I don't, I mean, he doesn't think I'm a dildo, I guess. <laughs> and then I said... It is insane that you, the first thing you think There's something, in passing an old man and his wife is that this guy thinks I'm a dildo. I've never driven a car this big. It's got 35-inch wheels. So you're also getting used to the yeah, car yeah. being an extension of yourself. I felt like it looked like I'm like a show-off or something. Right. I just, it, you How know. are you going to get over that? Well, oh. <laughs> Woo-hoo. No, I wasn't even. I wasn't. I wasn't saying that in a way. I mean, if that's the way you feel off the bat, you just get used to it. And then you go, "It's a fucking this car, is my regular car." Yeah. Anyway, so I go, "Thanks, man." And I go, "Hey, you look like you know what you're doing. You got a camera. What's where? This is a good place to watch the sunset." And I was like, "Cause these mountains are here, and I'm afraid like they're gonna block it. But every lookout point I go to, I feel like there's mountains in any direction you look. Like, but behind the sun was, and I go, are, are we facing the right way? And he's like, No. He goes, We're facing east. You got to face west. And he pointed, and I go, Yeah, man. Every time I look that way from any lookout point, there's mountains. And he goes, This is what he said. Man, this fucked me up, dude. He goes." 
Well, the thing is with the sunset, don't forget to look behind you. Sometimes the stuff behind you is more beautiful than this. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, look behind you. That's where the most beautiful stuff is. And I was like, holy shit, man. Like this, it was like, it was weird. It was like meeting like an angel or something that was like, I, this is what your trip is about. It's about looking for the thing you didn't think you were looking for. And then that was it. And he drove off. That's you know, good advice, actually. I never heard that. Yeah. But from my own experience, when I look at the sunset from my home, the opposite, it looks gorgeous where it's setting and the sky is always like pink and stuff. But if you look the other direction, it's true. It casts on the city. Yeah. And uh, the city looks insane at that time as well. So, good advice. I immediately started writing about that. I was like, this means something. I got to write down. And then as I was writing that, I was like, you know, P.S. I couldn't see shit. The fucking mountains blocked everything. <laughs> Which was kind of funny because you think it's going to be this deep moment. And then it, you're just like, oh, I actually, the mountains did block it. Right, right, right. Anyway, so I then I go down to Moab. I meet, I, I go to this restaurant. I meet the artist guy. We, we have a few drinks. I go back to the hotel room. With him or? Yeah, with him. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, I owe I owe him a call. <laughs> I love that Joe goes on the road and becomes a beatnik author. <laughs> <laughs> so then rolling his own cigarettes. Yeah, I did miss smoking for the first time since I quit because you're just like it feels like you that's what you should be doing. But anyway, uh, but I didn't break. But anyway, so then I might have shifted off camera. I don't know. I just looked up and it doesn't look like it's on me. I'm just saying it for. I Safety. leave Moab the next morning. Again, go to a place, get the biscuits. You doubled up on the biscuits two days in a row. Dude, I went, I think I got biscuits four days in a row. We, where are we right now yeah. on time? Just hit an hour. Should we continue this next week? Yeah, why not? The st then it's a two-parter. Do you have a cliffhanger? I thought you that? wanted to make it a two-parter. No, we said we we're going to label it Joe's birthday episode. Well, we can. Oh, you don't even now want it's it. it's still a two-parter. Yeah. Do you have a cliffhanger? Let's get a cliffhanger. We'll just... A cliffhanger. Uh, the cliffhanger was what the guy told him. Damn it. We missed it. I saw... Well, I did finally... You know what? I can wrap this up. Give me five more minutes. It's not that much longer. So it's not a two-part episode. No, no, no. The next episode is just McDonald's versus Pizza Hut. This one is called Joe's Birthday Extravaganza. Okay, so they, would, they should have never expected anything. No battle from the right. get. From the get. Yes, because we're going to title it. Are you okay? Oh, I'm very good. You yeah. here with us? Yes. yes. <laughs> but I, 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 what, is it that clear that what we were doing? I, yeah, remember I, when Pimp explained it to you? <laughs> but I thought, but he said we'll a couple put minutes part ago. One. Yeah, yeah. He thought you said we'll put part one. No, he said we'll just call this one Joe's Birthday Extravaganza so nobody gets mad that we didn't get to a battle in it. But we didn't even finish your birthday extravaganza stories. So that's going to carry over into next I'm week. I'm saying, let me, I can finish this. Like, oh, there's, okay. there's, but what if the, I have questions? I think it might have to carry over. Maybe we just end with salty. Maybe you guys just get salty. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I Please, continue that. I just thought you wanted to button it up at an hour. So I, can, can I can get three if we can. <laughs> I'm glad we're talking about this instead of the end of the story. But here's what I'm saying, right? I understand what you you're can, saying. Don't say anymore. You can Let me just finish the story. You could button it up. It will be there, Joe's birthday extravaganza. No battle. I can, but then in the next episode, you can continue because we still need a preamble. We do preambles before the battles. Sure, sure. So then, yes. Then it's, Pimp. It's the, Pimp. Okay. The button up is the man told me to look at the things behind me. There you go. That's, that was the button up. That was a great out. But we didn't get out there. Leave all this in. Yeah. If you want to support, then I the went pod, to Denver. Okay. Nothing I, happened. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened in Denver. But you're not even halfway through the country yet. I know. So My much point more. is, is it was pretty front heavy with stuff. There was a, there was, there was an. Exp I saw the sunset finally in Kansas. Kansas is the opposite of Utah. There is nothing coming now, out. Of the now, ground. will you agree with me? I think the West Coast. Is better than the East Coast driving. Yes. So that's what happened. I got to Denver. I stayed with my buddy Al Jackson. You know, nothing. Sorry, Al Jackson. Yeah, we just, we caught up. It was nice seeing him. 
nothing crazy happened, nothing poignant. We just kind of hung out together. And I said, okay, dude, when I leave here, and this to me is when it really became the adventure. I was like, when I leave here, it's a 14-hour shot home. There is nothing else to look at until Chicago, <laughs> really. And I've been to Chicago many times. I love Chicago, but I have no reason to go to Chicago, and I'm not excited to go to Chicago. Should I go south? Should I just say, fuck it, and go south? And Al goes, go south. You're doing this, do it. So I made two phone calls, and here's your cliffhanger before I went south. One was to Steve Byrne, and one was to Willie Nelson's granddaughter. <laughs> and I said, will you both be in town? And they both said, yes, come on down. Wow. Next stop, Nashville. Whoa. And it picks up next week during <laughs> McDonald's versus Pizza. Uh, SavileCanoComedy.com for all my tour dates. I start up again in October. There's a couple of dozen cities up there. We're going to Canada. We're going to California. We're going to Florida, uh, Louisville, Evansville, and everywhere in between. We just added second shows in Toronto, Atlanta, and Hershey, Pennsylvania. They're on sale right this second, SavileCanoComedy.com. If you want to support the pod, subscribe to the No Press channel on YouTube, tell a friend, rate us on iTunes, follow us on Spotify, and merch is available uh, on our websites. You can link from our Instagrams or our websites. Go ahead, Joey. Joe DeRosa Comedy uh, on Instagram and Twitter, JoeDeRosaInfo.com for all my tour dates. I'm in Atlantic City. Uh, I believe it's this week coming up, this weekend coming up. Please come out and see that. Actually, also, this is short notice, but if you're in New York... Tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, Can I Kick It? Me, Al Jackson, Tone Bell. Our hip-hop comedy show where we review old-school hip-hop videos and, uh, and, and celebrate old-school hip-hop and, and really have fun doing it, and it's super funny. We are doing our Vice taping. We're doing a pilot with Vice tomorrow at the Sultan Room. I don't know if there are tickets left at this point, but check it out. And maybe there are. And the there Sultan are, Room in Bushwick? Yes. I love that spot. You should come down to Do you know about that? Tomorrow. Have you ever been there? Oh, yeah. You My have? friend's brother owns it. That's what I, how I knew it. Are you kidding it. me? I just filmed an episode there. Yeah. yeah. Of, of Jokers? Jokers, yeah. It's a great room. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we're doing it. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, so anyway, that's tomorrow. And then also, there's tons more dates coming up. I got San Diego and Somerville in September. We've got, uh, I think, in October, North Carolina at the Dead Crow. Anyway, JoeDeRosaInfo.com. And then JoeyRosesNYC.com for all Joey Rose's information. There's always fun stuff happening at Joey Rose's. Open Tuesday through Sunday at 12 p.m. every day. Come through. Come see us. Order online. We'll see you later. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste.